Hey, good afternoon. I, I hope your day is going well. Listen, let me tell you, here in Delaware, it's gorgeous. I'm looking outside of my workshop slash garage right now at the beautiful blue sky, the big puffy clouds. Got my big garage door open in my workshop, and I'm just loving the day. And I'm working on a project, and I thought, hey, I haven't shared a project on Facebook in a long, long time, so here we go. It's a, a simple, a quick, and easy one. So a couple disclaimers. Um, I'm in my workshop, and my workshop is a workplace, so it gets kind of messy in here, and I'm okay with that. I hope you're okay with that. Also, I've been working on other projects. I've literally splattered some paint somewhere here. I tried wiping it off. I said, forget it. Let's just go with it. And let's see, what's the other disclaimer? I have stink bugs in the garage like crazy. Do you have them? Do you have them right now? They are all over. And the crazy little things will just fly like right into my hair. So if I get a little freaked out during this, that's, you know, I got a stink bug problem or potato bug. I don't, I think they're called stink bugs. Anyway, what else? Um, that's it. So let me show you what I'm working on. This is a wooden box. So you know that we're big into thrifting and auctions and all that good stuff. And we come across this kind of thing a lot. Look at this box. So it's stamped. Let's see what that says. C-E, choose E sandwich, M-A-S-S, -S, like the state, Massachusetts. I, I don't know what this box was used for. Did they put sandwiches in here? I, I don't know. My, um, my camera's a little bit messed up. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. The holder was right over the lens. Anyway, I don't know what the box was used for. We came across it. It was a really cool wooden box. I love old wood like this. Um, I don't, I think it was handmade. I'm not really sure, but it's just a really cool box. And I thought I am just going to show you how I give a box like this a little bit of refreshing. So let's talk about what I'm going to use. This is a product called Let's see if I can do that without the sun shining right on the label. Dixie Bell Big Mama's Butter. Isn't that fun? <laughs> like, like, that is such a southern name. But it's put out by Dixie Bell. It's a mixture of all sorts of great nourishing ingredients that are natural. They're um, like carnauba wax, I think. And I don't know. There's a couple of really good things in here. One of the best things that's in here, and I wish that you could smell this with me, but when you open this lid... The, the scent is called Orange Grove, and I'm going to tell you, it smells so good. One of the reasons that I like to use this kind of a thing on the wood is, number one, it's going to really make the wood beautiful. I mean, it's, you're going to see what we're going to do here. It's going to really enrich the wood. And also, it helps to get rid of the smells that come with old wood. I mean, the thing is, if this was sitting in a barn somewhere or forever and it was dusty and musty and all that, it's going to have a bit of a dull, musty kind of smell, even though it's clean. So this orange grove, Big Mama's Butter, is going to just fix that right up. And it's so easy to use. All I do is I use one of these chip brushes. They're really inexpensive. It's a natural bristle brush. Say that ten times fast. And um, it's just super easy to use, and they're disposable. So I get these really cheap. I mean, I don't know. I buy them by like the hundred. I buy them in a hundred. When you buy them like that, they wind up being fifty cents a piece. I mean, it's so worth it. I get a couple uses out of it, and then I just toss it when I'm done with it. So that's what I use there. If you are interested in these chip brushes, you can DM me, and I can send you a link for those. And if you are interested in this Dixie Bell's big mama's butter i can send you a link for that too so just mention that down in the comments and i'll get back to you this afternoon when i get the box finished and a couple other projects that i'm working on too anyway let's get started with this so the first thing i'm going to do is just literally dab this i'm not wiping scraping i'm not getting big amounts you can see there's hardly anything on there i'm just literally dabbing it on there and the oils and all uh, reach right into that brush. Oops, out of my way. Let's see if I can get this set up so you can see it. I hope you can see this. And then I just rub it into the wood. Can you see that already? Look at this. So this, the oils are soaking into the wood, nourishing the wood. This is kind of like lotion for your skin. You know how when your skin 
gets really dry. Um, I know I get, my skin was really drying out as I started aging. It's just bad. And in the winter, it's really bad. Well, you know how it feels when you put lotion, a really good quality lotion on your face. I would love to know, by the way, do you know of a really good lotion for women in their late 50s, early 60s? Do you have anything really good? Put it in the comments because I'm kind of getting to that point. Not kind of getting there. I'm already there. And anyway, enough of that. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep dabbing on a little bit more of the Big Mama's Butter right into the wood. See, this, this chip brush is great. I can get into all these little... Can you see that okay? I can get into that. See that? And all up in here too. All underneath. And then here at the grain end, like here, this is kind of rough. The bristles, those natural bristles, are just going to work right into that wood. Just like that. Super easy. We're going to do this side. And I'm going to hang on for a little while. I don't know if I'll take you through the whole project because it's basically doing this step all around the outside and then I go all around the inside. So we may or may not stay on that long. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, this was spur of the moment. I thought, hey, I'm going to show them how I'm using this before I get started. So you could see it. So I love wooden boxes. We really have quite a thing for wooden boxes. Um, we repurpose and reinvent all sorts of home decor and furniture. And then we teach you how to do it, like here. And mostly over on my blog at reinventeddelaware.com. I've got a slew of tutorials of all sorts and speaking of wooden boxes I just turned a oh you would love it it's a toolbox okay I got to keep working while we're talking girls I can't I gotta get focused <laughs> all right so let me just tell you as I'm working here um so I turned this old vintage toolbox oh my gosh it's so cool looking I turned it into a storage container. You can see it on my blog. I can't remember if I put it here on Facebook. You could go over on my feed and take a look there. I'm pretty sure I did. Memory is not my strong, strong point. Repurposing is. I'm pretty good at repurposing, but I can't remember what I repurposed. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, so we're just gonna work around. But anyway, I took this box. It was long and narrow. I think it might have been a military box of some sort and there were just little cubbies in it to you know store little doodads probably if it was a military box the fella that would have had the box probably stored um, a shaving kit you know a wash up kit stuff like that he probably stored an uh, extra change of socks and boots stuff like that anyway we took this thing and I, we removed some legs. I say we because my husband helps me a lot with the projects. Like I can't do most of what I do without him. And he's always there to help me figure things out. I come up with these crazy ideas and I'm like, honey, we gotta make this work. And he says, okay. So anyway, um, we took legs off of an old table that was broken. So it was this small uh, table that had Queen Anne legs. Do you know what I mean by Queen Anne legs? They're, they're like wide at the top and then they kind of curve down in a gentle curve down at the bottom. They were literally named after um, Princess Anne from England. So we took these four legs off of the broken table, kept the legs, and we attached them to this wooden box. So the wooden box is not, it has legs. Like this doesn't have any legs. This thing has legs on it and it stands up. I painted it out. I used Dixie Bell products to paint it out. I used the uh, chalk mineral paint to, to paint it in this adorable um, light neutral color. It, it's just so pretty. It chipped up really beautiful. Hey, hang on just a second. Look at the difference. You see the area that I have used the Big Mama's Butter. It's starting to soak in. And then you see that area right there on the edge. I haven't done that edge. Let's take a look at that front look at that it's really soaking in now typically you have to um somebody's leaving some information about the old lady cream thank you i'm going to read it later on so thank you appreciate that anyway you typically have to leave this big mama's butter on a couple minutes a few minutes and then you buff it off 
like with one of these blue shop towels. But this is soaking in so well because the wood is super dry, just like my skin needing that oil. This wood is super dry, so it is just soaking right in. I mean, it's just really looking really pretty. Love old wood. You cannot get this patina any other way but age. Maybe that's what we should think about our faces. It's kind of a good thought. Maybe we should think about this as a patina. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and it, it takes a little while to, to get this kind of patina. This box is probably, I mean, I'm guessing it dates to the 40s. No kidding. It's, it's an old one. Really nice. What we're doing is just making it last a little bit longer. We're making the color rich again we're not removing any patina like you see that none of the patina is being taken off we're actually enhancing so it's kind of like salt in a you know how you have to use salt in a recipe that it calls for sweet things like cookies you always put a little dash of salt or uh, cinnamon rolls you always put a little dash of salt because the salt actually enhances the flavor of everything else and without that salt it just comes off a little dull in that cookie recipe right so that's what's happening that's what's happening with this oil otherwise it was kind of dull with this the oils that are in this big mama's butter let me show you again excuse my dog barking it's like a if I put my hand in there it'd be uh, the consistency of Vaseline because it's thick but um, I just don't even know how to describe it. The consistency is so, so interesting. This is what I'm using. Dixie Bell's Big Mama's Butter. I love the name of that stuff. Listen, I'm from Texas. I, I was born in Austin, Texas, lived there for six months, and I claim I'm a Texan. I mean, I'm just going with it. So when I hear Southern stuff, hey, I am all about it, you know? All right, so I was, I was talking about how this stuff just really enriches the color of the wood it deepens the tones it even brings out the lettering look at now I've got a glare I see there we go so it even brings out that lettering that it it just really makes everything stand out even more a little bit more noticeable just like the salt in a cookie recipe it is enhancing what's already there it's not changing it it's just enhancing it and I love that with an old vintage piece like this. We love old vintage pieces. It just kind of speaks of the, speaks of our past, speaks of our history, speaks of the worker that, I, like I said, I don't know what this box was used for. It says something about sandwiches, but whoever used it in his workplace, in her workplace, it represents that blue collar worker. And I'm all about that. I'm a blue collar worker and I'm proud of it. And I like working with my hands. I like having paint all over my face. So see the little section right here? I started putting the Big Mama's Butter on, and I thought, well, golly, I just want to go show my Facebook friends what I'm doing because this is such an easy project. It really is. So I'm going to save this live so you can come back and watch it later on if you want to, if you forgot what I've used. Um, if you forgot how easy it is, I mean, this is memorable stuff right here. Let me tell you, this is just big technique. So if you go out and find one of these boxes, you know, you go to stores like, um, okay, so we have all of our things over at Wilder Lodge in Greenwood. You know that. We have a little booth. And a lot of other vendors, um, they bring items just like this box into the shop, and they will offer them. Now, some of the vendors do some makeovers and some of the vendors just find the items and bring it in so that uh, people can do their own makeovers. And this right here would be such a simple makeover to do. Like if you found one of these boxes over at Wilderlove, just in no time, you could have this box looking so good. So good. So let's talk about what to do with boxes like this. I, um, after you let it, you know, after you get it, the wood all spiffied up like this, this is not necessarily waterproof, so I would not leave it outside, but it's an old box. I wouldn't leave it outside anyway because, you know, weather and all that stuff. You might notice this piece here 
is a little different than this. I, I had to replace, uh, this section was completely missing. So I took a scrap wood that I had close to a color and I just cut a piece and, and stuck it on there. Anyway, so these boxes could be used as a plant holder, like instead of the ugly container that comes with so many plants, it's just kind of plain and plastic. You could keep it in that plastic container, most definitely. There's holes in this. These crates have holes in them, see the holes? So you could just set that plant right in here and it would hide the plastic. The plastic container would protect the box and it would look really pretty because all you would see is the wood. So that would be a really great use of it. I'm going to go on the bottom as well, and I'm also going to do the inside, but I don't think I'm gonna do that while we're here together. I don't wanna hold you up. Everybody's got stuff to do. Anyway, so that would be really beautiful with, um, with a plant inside. So with it being fall, I can see this, like stick a little miniature bale of hay in here stick a pumpkin in here um, and just use it to decorate for fall a couple of pumpkins like fill it up like you've just been to the pumpkin patch and you've just picked all these pumpkins and put them in here that'd be so cute you could at Christmas time you know there's just lots of ideas there Christmas trees you could fill this up with pine cones from your yard you could paint the pine cones I actually have a project coming up for Christmas about painting pine cones. Such an easy, such an easy project. And it's just fun to do. I don't know. There's just something about getting your hands into paint, into working on something, um, and just being a little bit creative. And you don't necessarily have to think of the idea to do for yourself. If, if you want to do creative things and you can't think of what to do, you now you just get on a blog like ours. I'll help you with the creative ideas. You get on Pinterest and you look for creative ideas. We're over on Pinterest. I'd love you to follow if you could. And um, yeah, so, and then also for my blog, I send out an email of my new blog post. So if you go over and sign up, I'll send you a little freebie. And then you get on my email list and I just, sit, we don't, listen, we don't sell emails. I don't do that at all. I don't sell them, I don't give them away, I don't share them, none of that stuff. All I want it for is so I can send you all the fun projects that we're doing over on our blog so that you could do these projects. Okay, so back to uses. So this winter with the uh, gloves and hats that are gonna be on and off, on and off all winter, you could use this as storage for that. Make them look a little bit better in your laundry area, at your back entrance, wherever wherever it is that you come in and out of the door. And then your kids would know, hey, throw all your stuff in there. And next time they need their gloves or their hats or scarves, then there you go. Now I am also going to do the inside later on. Look at the difference. So there's the inside of the wood. Let's take a close look. There's the inside of that. Really dried out looking, right? Here's the outside. Look at the difference. Wow. Like I said, it just enriches the, the tones, the wood tones. It doesn't cover up anything. I haven't changed the, um, the value of this box. I've just given it a nice fresh coat of lotion. I'm using <clears throat> Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter right there and a chip brush. That is, I can throw this away when I'm finished. I just rub it in. This has an interesting consistency. It's a paste sort of. You just dab it on and you just work it into the wood like we've done. Alrighty. Well, I think that's about it. I'm going to do the inside of the box all on my own. This box will be available at Wilderlove, probably not till next Thursday. If you're interested in it now, you know, send me a DM and we can chit chat about that. If you are interested in purchasing this Dixie Bell product, DM me because I can get you a link. Uh, it's a wonderful product. If you're interested in buying a box of those chip brushes, like I said, I buy like, I don't know, a hundred of them. I don't know, 50 of them at a time. I can send you a link for that too. If you have any questions, ask in the comments and I'm going to check later on today. I'm going to finish this box and I've got several other projects. And oh my goodness, I got to turn my phone off and my hands have that oil. 
So good luck with that. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I really do appreciate your support. I know I'm not here on Facebook nearly like I'd like to be, but it's that, that four letter word time, T-I-M-E. <laughs> There's just so much, but you can be assured that all the projects that we do, I share over on my blog, reinventeddelaware.com, and you can find all sorts of repurposed and reinvented home decor and furniture, and I give you step-by-step -step instructions. And if you read one of those posts and you're like, hey, I didn't understand this part, you just send me a DM, and I mean, not a DM, you comment or send me an email. You'll see the email over there on my blog, and I'll help you to answer that question. If you have a question about one of your projects, hey, Cindy, what do you think I gotta do with this thing? Shoot me an email, and I'll, I'll help you out as much as I possibly can. I also have a YouTube channel. It's under Reinvented Delaware, and we have lots of fun over there. Listen, making videos at in this era of my life has been interesting. So you hop over there, you have a good chuckle, and let's see what else. I think that's it. My dog is getting ready to get worked up because there's a bird flying over ahead, and I better go before he gets crazy. So I will see you later, bye.